Well, hello, dear viewers, Andrew LaPamardo here, and today we're going to discuss how they will make cemeteries their cathedrals and the cities will be your tomb. Demons, 1985, explored. This video will take you through the Italian horror film set in Berlin in the deep 80, The Demon. People were already noticing Italian horror titles flooding the market in the mid-1980s, as directors such as Mario Brava and Diario Argento were taking the world by storm with their giallo titles. Demons is a 1985 Italian horror film directed by Lombardo Brava and starring Umbario Barbarini and Natasha Hovey. Somewhere down in its heart, Demon is actually a zombie film, of which there were a considerable number being made in Italy during the 1980s. However, we can say it's about the evil presence. Over-the-top effects, gore, eroticism, and suspense, as well as stories that push the imagination wild. There was much to be anticipated from such films. We were confronted with crazy killers and hordes of zombies, jungles teeming with ferocious cannibals, and so many twisted dreams of memorable events that it was difficult to predict what would come next. Its narrative revolves around two female university students who, along with a slew of other individuals, are granted free tickets to a mystery movie showing where they quickly find themselves trapped in a theater with a swarm of voracious demons. The film had a great box office opening and received mixed reviews from reviewers. Over time, the film developed a cult following. We were presented with crazy killers and hordes of zombies, jungles teeming with ferocious cannibals and so many twisted dreams of memorable events that it was difficult to predict what would come next. Lamberto Brava, Mario Brava's son, collaborated with writer Dardano Saggetti and Diario Argento, who assisted with the storyline and production to create Demons in 1985. The 1980s horror film employed antiquated B-movie special effects. <laughs> oh my God. Having said that, many of the practical effects are well staged and wonderfully coated in corn syrup gore. One sequence in particular makes excellent use of a low-budget practical effects, such as fingernails and teeth manipulation. The plot is straightforward, albeit a little redactive in its departure from its early meta-textual bent. The idea of the character's condition being mirrored in the film they're viewing is an excellent remark on the nature of viewer gratification in the face of the horror genre. Setting the scene fast, the film takes a bold and fairly successful attempt at showing Berlin as a gothic place place and combines it with contemporary day pink-haired punks clustering along the train, giving the film a modern flavor. Lamberto Brava's Demons reintroduced this tradition in the mid-1980s with a gory touch and sense of humor that immediately won admirers over. It is one of the most popular and its simplistic storyline makes it no less enjoyable. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Their evil becomes an orgy of bloodshed. Demons, 1985. The film opens with Cheryl who is on the Berlin train, looking prim and proper in her sensible sweater, surrounded by fashionable young punks and new romantics looking forward to a fun night out. When she gets off, she's pursued by a masked stranger, leading us to fear that, as in many current thrillers, we are in for a murder. But instead, the stranger offers her a ticket to a special cinema showing. A ticket, it would appear, to a more interesting existence. A masked stranger gives Cheryl, a university student, two complimentary tickets to a movie at a remote and just built neighborhood theater. Uh, can I have another one? It's for a friend of mine. Cheryl persuades Kathy, her friend, to accompany her to the theater, where they are encountered by George and Ken, 
to College Lab. You don't believe me? It'll be a horror film, do ya? Cheryl inquires of her friend Kathy about the nameless film that they are about to attend. It is, yet in a perplexing piece of meta cinema, the actions represented on screen spill into the theater area. A blind man and his daughter, a married couple, a lover and girlfriend, and Tony and his two prostitutes are among those who attend the movie. Rosemary one of the prostitutes who was there slashes her face with a strange mask on exhibit in the foyer. The movie that was being presented was a violent film, unsettling horror thriller about four adolescents who unearth an old tomb and dig up the grave of Nostradamus. Also, a fortune teller. When the kids open Nostradamus' coffin, they discover no corpse but an ancient book and a mask that looks exactly like the weird mask in the lobby. When one of the film's protagonists puts on the mask and gets scratched by it, like Rosemary was by its doppelganger, he goes evil and kills his friends. Rosemary walks to the washroom because she is unwell and she turns into a vicious red-eyed demon identical to the one in the movie, who is also red-eyed. Rosemary assaults her companion, Carmen, who subsequently changes into a monster in front of the audience. The people who are still unaffected rush to whatever exit they can locate, only to discover that all of them have been blocked, making their escape possible. She undergoes the same change as all the others, as Rosemary strikes attacking another in turn. Cheryl and George must spend the rest of the night fending for themselves after discovering that all of the exits from the cinema hall have been closed. Despite their attempts to cover themselves in the balcony, the demons strike and infect several of them. When the four gangsters break into the building through a rear entry, one of the demons flees into the city. The punks are soon converted into demons also. Only George and Cheryl are unaffected in the theater. They ride across the theater, slashing down several demons, with the use of a motorcycle from the foyer. They escape the auditorium when a chopper crashes through the roof. George kills virtually all of them. With the use of a grappling hook, they ascend the roof when they are accosted by the mystery man, the man they had encountered at the subway. They murder him by hitting his skull with an exposed piece of rebar. Then the two of them walk down the street, where they learn that the demonic illness has spread in and out of Berlin. Cheryl, who was infected in the theater, transforms into a demon as they drive out of town to safety. Then, they are pursued by a swarm of demons before being rescued by a vehicle full of armed survivors. But before she can do anything to George, he kills her with a shotgun. As Cheryl's body falls onto the road, George, the film's solitary survivor, and the survivalists escape from the town and land into an uncertain future. Bava was surrounded by horror thanks to his father, Mario, who took him to the film sets as a youngster. By 1985, he had already had a few reasonably successful pictures under his belt, but Demons was his big break, establishing his brand in English language markets and introducing him to new audiences. Its ketchup based blood effects may appear crude today, but they created quite an impact at the time. Importantly, Throughout the film, the filmmakers treat the incredible components of the plot with total confidence, making it simpler for the spectator to accept them and focus on the action. The limited places provided by the setting appear to inspire rather than hinder him, and despite the thin concept, he manages to keep the viewer's interest throughout. This film contains several hidden illusions, making it a must-see for giallo love. What truly distinguishes it, though, is its sense of comedy, with dark humor and even slapstick living in it up what could otherwise be a gloomy circumstance. The suspense builds towards the climax and is progressively widened by a feeling of existential terror reminiscent of George Romero's finest work. Meanwhile, Brava has a lot of fun with the error's fashion and fripperies, mocking the expectations created by American cinema. Demons is a fantastic journey that is superficially funny, but has a lot more gloom beneath the surface. That's impossible! Get me! Why should you watch Demons? Lamberto Brava is one of the few directors who can get away with making a horror picture with the special effects, suspense, 
and mayhem, so beautifully portrayed and wonderfully produced that the plot becomes meaningless. The makeup is fantastic for a low budget film from the 1980s, and these monsters seem extremely terrifying as if transposed from our worst nightmares and anxieties. The beady eyes, sharp fangs, lengthy claws, and utterly nasty growl are just a few of the features that make this film worth seeing. The sight of the humans who become these creatures is mind-boggling, as all essence of their being and souls melt away in a sea of blood and ripped skin as they take on the monsters. This film also stands out in the genre because it has one of the most intriguing locations ever seen in a horror film. A traditional cinema theater. One that looks and feels like a vintage movie theater from the 1950s. And like the mall in Dawn of the Dead, it takes on a life of its own. The narrative is sparse, but it goes somewhat like this. A group of individuals are given invites to a screening of demons at a new local West Berlin movie theater. The music to this film is also worth checking. We were given a lot of images of punks with wild hair and outfits, as well as introduced to some sleazy looking folks sniffing cocaine out of a coke can while driving about seeking for kick. Due to the fact that the film is set in the mid 80s and takes place in a populous metropolis, several songs appear to start playing throughout these moments. And we learn that they are by Billy Idol, Motley Crue, Rick Springfield and Saxon, among others. We can almost overlook the rather crazy dubbing that appears to be the only option accessible to American audiences, thanks to the amazing music score and wild special effects. Lumberto Brava, on the other hand, never seems to be concerned in creating anything other than than an experience that is a sensory explosion of very powerful gore effects. All of the characters and settings in Demons appear to be imported. The conversation is in colloquial American and corresponds to the lip motions, although it sounds dubbed. Demons is, in general, what people mean when they say things like, that's so metal, and there's only in the 80s feel to all of the running around and watching people get ripped in half by demons and watching demons get chopped in pieces by a man riding a motorcycle and wielding a samurai sword. Hardly a spoiler, it's clearly in the wings from the moment we see that lobby display. Like the relentless metal soundtrack, which works well here, or the extremely and mostly believable gore, or the strange finale, which isn't unpredictable in the traditional sense, but certainly took me off track. The film zigzags in enough places and somewhere it's exaggerated. In terms of emotions, perhaps Brava is just taking cover behind daringness to try not to need to make a reasonable film. Yet, Demons is bold enough that he'll pull it off. So basically, it's a zombie movie premise with a lot more bizarre zombies. The Mysterious Masked Man and Demon. These demons scratch you, and before you know it, your eyes have transformed into fireballs, your nails into talons, your teeth into fangs, filthy substances have bubbled out, and all you want to do is scratch someone else. At this rate, as you might imagine, it's not long before the two surviving young folks are much outnumbered by the demons and only managed to escape with the help of a Doex helicopter. The tagline, they will make cemeteries their cathedrals and the cities will be your tombs, screams of pure evil delight. While the demonic plague actual spreads seem to borrow heavily from the concept of zombie outbreaks, with simple bites and scratches causing the transformation, the biggest difference was that becoming a demon would not cause you to rot and wander aimlessly, but rather transform you into a terrifying, brutal monster with razor-sharp nails. The demons were nasty, crafty, and unrelenting, and their contagion was so passive that death seemed inescapable. We had a wide range of prey, including young lovers, college ladies skipping class, an elderly couple celebrating their anniversary, and even some city punks up to no good. So, start the demonic flesh ripping frenzy. The transition from human to demon, or zombie, appears to be a difficult process, with fingernails splitting apart to make way for the demon's claw-like black claws, and 
teeth falling out one by one to be replaced by sharp, pointed fangs. The visual effects in this film are both beautiful and corny, but I admire the effort to illustrate the process rather than simply going from human to demon. The overall effect of the makeup is rather frightening, and one demon in particular, which can be found on some of the film's earlier VHS covers, may give you nightmares. Not to mention the fact that the decapitation is a far more complicated procedure than most people believe. Although the film is 35 years old, it displays no indication of depreciation. Sure, the clothing and music are out of date, but the film is frozen in time near perfection and feels like something out of a nightmare. Brava immerses us in full darkness and horror with no hope in sight, from the theaters to the subways. At times, the picture this guy portrays is magnificent, with a society that is so quickly driven into madness at the hands of these bloodthirsty ghouls. What you sit down to see is literally mankind being ripped to pieces by these godless monsters, and you have no control over it. The movie within a movie becomes the ultimate gag for depiction of the apocalypse. And by the final act, where we're treated to a surprise twist and shock during the closing credits, it becomes painfully clear that everyone who survived is doomed to fall at the claws of these beings. And there is simply no hope. The film is a trip into lunacy and turmoil that can be silly fun. Some of the visuals are rather frightening, and there's enough blood and shredded flesh to satisfy the most feverish gore hunt. This is a fantastic party film that you must watch with friends. You will not be bored. When you're not laughing, you'll be clutching to your seats, pulling for the characters, and when you're not hanging to your seats, I promise you'll be reconsidering ever seeing a horror film in the cinema again. Brava's Horror Picture is a cinematic classic in its own right. Come on! Give me the hand! Put yourself up! Come on! The best part about the demon. The best part about the movie is there's no hour long buildup, no time squandered on dull character development, and no complicated narrative elements. And of course, this isn't an Italian horror film if rationality isn't thrown out the window. How does the film enslave its audience? Where did the supernatural power originate from? And why is it restricted to the Metropool's walls? Why is it necessary for someone to be bitten or scratched in order to be possessed by a demon? Who cares if you don't know? Demons have arrived to have a good time. And there will be a celebration. Sure, some viewers may be turned off by the paper-thin characters, shallow narrative, lack of buildup, and lack of explanation, but such viewers are missing the point. Demons are all about having fun. That's all there is to it. Rosario Prestepino and Sergio Stavaletti's makeup effects are a huge draw here as they help produce some spectacular imagery like a demon infant erupting from a character's back, or a possessed Carmen's tongue flapping about outside her mouth like a specific part of a horse's anatomy. And while we're on the subject of aesthetics, Demons has one of the best, a swarm of demons mounting a stairway against a backdrop of smoky blue light. If you haven't watched Demons, you are certainly missing out on one of the most underappreciated horror films of the 1980s. It's one of those films that after you see it, you'll wonder why you weren't told about it sooner. Brava understands exactly what his audience wants to see, and he doesn't waste any time in giving it, all while keeping a frenzy, high-energy tempo and vibe. Watch it right now! What's stopping you? Go! If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.